Hey everybody, it is Toronto Unicorn here with a very juicy story time. I am with Miss Curly Vixen. Woo woo. And once again, she is here to contribute to a story because we just keep having crazy shit happen in our lives and you get to hear all about it. So basically we went to Bukaki theme night at Oasis Aqua Lounge Sex Club and I have a vlog on YouTube where you can watch all about how it went. But one of the things that happened was I met quite a few view viewers that night of my content and a few people from different countries. And there was this one gentleman from the country of Turkey who was visiting. And so we're going to call him Mr. Turkey today. And basically, let me just run it down and then we're going to pass it over to Curly to tell you some of the details. So he was brand new to the sex club experience. He was shy. Um, he was kind of sitting against the wall and um, not really talking to anyone. So anyways, he had said that he was, he watched my content and like thanked me for, for what I put out there and had mentioned that he's from a, a very like sexually conservative country. And he had just never been, he's like, I'm 47. I've never licked a woman. I've never like, you know, he didn't even say pussy. He was just like, I've never licked a woman. I've never fondled woman's breasts. And like, he looked at me as if like 47 and I'm like, yeah, I hear you, man. I hear you. Like it was that feeling of he felt done. He felt done with that fucking truth. He wanted to be a new truth. And so he bought himself a ticket, a plane ticket to Canada, came to that sex club. And lo and behold, I walk in on a Bukaki night and uh, we start socializing and I find out that he is this new and you know he tells me a story and miss curly vixen was sitting amongst us because we were all playing the intrusive question game and I'll, i know that many women like to be appreciated at sex clubs and i don't know if it gets any better than a man who's never touched a woman's breast before or licked a pussy but that's pretty fucking appreciated i would hope so i leaned to, to curly and i was like um curly so this gentleman here has like never had these experiences would you be open to like maybe doing that and again i wasn't pushy because it's totally like still up to everyone involved but i think we were like, looking at each other <laughs> well either, at one point it was you knew, the, you knew i would be about it yeah yeah you, like, you were be beside me on one side he was beside me and i stopped talking to him and i looked at you and i was like so curly <laughs> so this yeah. guy's looking for this <laughs> and uh and then you thought about it for a second and said like that you were open to it and and then I remember you kind of did your part of like you know making it easy for him making him feel comfortable I did not see what happened after this so I need you to tell me I knew later you came down and told me what happened but I need to hear this story in detail don't be filtered this is a podcast uh about what happened with this guy so basically he just kind of followed me like a lost puppy for a little bit because again he didn't know where or what or anything that was happening so i was like you know come with me we'll go check out the the show being put on oasis always has a um you know some sort of show at 10 o'clock in their ballroom and it was bukaki so we went towards the room and it was a freaking madhouse like everyone and their dog was there and I'm like okay I don't think there's space and this is going to be a little bit scary and intimidating for this poor man so I was like um we went for a smoke hung out there for a little bit and then uh went in and I was like you know what why don't we go upstairs and so I initiated the whole thing brought him upstairs with me there was no one up there so like that took a little bit of his fear away I think so I tried to find a room that was not as you know, open. So we went into the porn room because I figured the porn room could also help him get into the right mind frame because that's pretty much the only exposure to sex he's had through porn. So we went there and, you know, laid down towels and whatever. And um, I kind of expected to have to sort of lead everything. But here's the honest truth. I don't know if he was pulling our leg. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this was a way of actually scoring and acting innocent because the way that this man pleasured me he freaking he fucking knew what he he knew what he was doing okay yeah. he knew what he was doing with his hands he knew what he was doing with his fingers and he knew what he was doing with his tongue and for a man that has supposedly never done that either he's watching really good educational porn or mm -hmm. He actually did know what he was doing and it was a tactic. And I have heard that guys sometimes pull that, but he seemed quite innocent. So I don't know, maybe he was just naturally talented, but 
anyway, so he laid me down. Just and- to pause for a second. So I know that you mentioned that concern later too. You're like, he was too good to be new. And the truth is, if I, I went through the sequence of events and I thought, well, if he knew in advance that, you know, virgins or what not necessarily virgins, but people who are very new are highly you know, prioritized at these clubs, but that wasn't the case. Like he was shy against the wall. He he could have led by saying, I'm great at eating pussy and tried to win people over that way. So he, he didn't, I don't think he actually tried to have sex with anyone. He just confessed to me that this was his situation. And then I kind of introduced him. So I don't believe that he could be lying, but because I never saw him again, I always will wonder, right? Like, did yeah. he just kind of do his thing and leave? But he did talk a little like he he's asked me to slow down because I I speak so fast and stuff. So he was genuinely like not from here and visiting. No, so for I, sure. I'm, I'm gonna lean on believing him and hoping yeah. that because remember he kept saying, Don't worry, I've watched lots of videos, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. But let's just give him the benefit of the doubt. But we'll put that uh we'll, we'll put that on the record of we don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what honestly, who the fuck cares? Like as long as he as long as he did what was intended and got me totally off, then it's well, fine. Well, I, right? I would never support a guy who lied. I would never reward that with uh, with anything. So I, I don't yeah. think he did. I don't. I think that I don't. it was such an innocent interaction with him and me. And I remember thinking in my head, like, this is such a good opportunity. But I don't think he would have had that happen. I don't think he would have gotten back on a plane and went back to Turkey having sex if it wasn't for you. Yeah. Yeah, because you need game at these clubs, and this guy was mm-hmm. like, "I'm here to have sex." Like, you know, right? He was idealistic at best, and I just, I feel like in a way, I just, I, I don't know about you, but we made magic happen that night, yeah. right? And, and yeah. so that's why. Okay, so now you can walk us through. But can you tell us some of his mindset? Was he nervous? Was he fidgety? Anything like that? Yeah, he was definitely nervous, definitely fidgety, like you know, really following my lead on where to go, what to do, and. You know, we kind of lie down there and I was like, so what are you looking for here? And he was like, oh, no, no, no. This is all about you. He's like, what can I do for you and bring you to bring you pleasure? And I was like, well, you you talked a good game about your, you know, wanting to please a woman orally. And I love people like oral enthusiasts. So I was like, let's let's get down with that. I'm like, you know, I'm I'm freshly clean and whatever. So. Yeah. So he just kind of laid me down. He started with his fingers a little bit. And then um, once he got me a little bit warmed up, then he moved, uh, moved down on me and um, started pleasuring me orally. And he was really good. He knew the spots to touch. He didn't stay in the same spot the whole time. He moved around a little bit because I said to him, I was kind of coaching him a little. I was like, don't be afraid. I'm like, it's a big organ. There's lots for you to explore, you know, like, yeah just enjoy, you know, and, and I warned him ahead of time about my super squirting because that could be a really shocking thing to someone (laughs) and in their face, right? Like, especially orally, like, I don't know if you want a mouthful of freaking pussy juice. Not everybody does. (laughs) So, but he seemed all about it. He was fine. And when it happened, he just kind of drank it down and kept going. So yeah, he was, he was good. And, uh, and that he didn't last very long down there orally. Cause I think that once that happened, he's like, oh, she's done. It's like, mm, no, yeah. I can go for a long time. But anyway, then he was like, we have the sex. And I was like, I was like, here's a condom. Like, go for it. You got me warmed up. And then this freaking gorgeous cock comes out of his pants too. He was packing this beautiful penis that none of us saw. It was like wide and longer and he got on top and that's, I would say my two best angles are just like a guy right on top, like in missionary, but like, um, close, like that close right on top missionary. So he was getting me good that way. And I started squirting and then, and then he switched to, um, I think, no, I didn't get on top of him. Cause that's my other one where it's like turbo squirting. Um, I was like, no, I'm just gonna be a pillow princess and lie here and enjoy myself. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was so good. Like he was, he went and he went for a while. Like I'd say we were, we were like fucking for like a good half hour and he wasn't getting all, like he wasn't, he wasn't coming. And I was like, usually, usually a guy that is super keen like that 
and innocent and doesn't know what's happening. And once they've experienced a super wet pussy, that's another thing that, especially if they're getting squirted on, they usually come really quick, but he wasn't. And so I would, after a while, I was like, okay, what angle is going to make you, you know, come? Cause I like a guy getting, like, I want a guy. It's like, it's like the goal, you know, to get yeah. them to come. And he just wasn't. And I think, and then I think a couple of people started rotating around upstairs and that probably got him a little bit nervous. And so then, you know, he kind of got off and then just sort of lied next to me. So I knew that was like him kind of saying, I'm, I'm done. Like I've had my time. And he was like, that was magical. He was like, that was amazing. Wow. Um, so we definitely had a really good experience and he just kind of followed me downstairs. I think we had a smoke and then parted ways. Wow. Yeah. I never saw Ooh. him again. Part of me wanted to like give him a hug and be like, hope you have a good trip back. Like, right. um, you know, and, and again, some people, when they have an experience that's really profound like that, sometimes they need to go and absorb it. Right. And right. So, I think he had had what he needed. I think he said he yeah. wanted to go for some dinner or something or some food. Yeah. So um, I think he just disappeared after that, but I'm pretty sure he got what he wanted out of the experience. That's for sure. Wow. Well, that's so cool. Um, I'm, I'm, I had a few fans from different countries and I really hope I'm not mixing them up because I did say goodbye to one fan who left a little early and um, and I put some clothes on to go take a photo with him. But I don't think that was, I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I could be- Different mistaken. guy, different guy. Was it? Okay. Because we had a few people there who, for lack of, uh, this is not an understatement, we changed their lives. We changed Sorry. our lives. We in included them in the intrusive question game in the pool. We got them to admit that they were like nervous or like new or, you know, sexually oppressed and looking to appreciate a woman and a bunch of people's ears perked up. Right. So, and then they got these experiences and you got to say like, you got to give a man <laughs> who may have never, ever had that experience, even traveling all this way. And now he gets to spend that plane ride home thinking I did, I went, I had, now what you know and that's that's right exciting than, than going all the way home thinking it was right there but i couldn't touch it you know <laughs> right 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 and he was he was quite sweet about the whole thing too and like he was he was an attractive looking man like i i have to have something that attracts me to these guys to like you know like i 100 percent like i've said to you before that i really do base it on personalities and connections mm -hmm. but like they have to have some game even if it is in a foreign language and like he was very sweet and like when when we were having sex like he was saying stuff like oh you're so beautiful you're so amazing so he did have game and knew what he was doing you know it didn't make me feel like he was just using me for that experience yeah so so that's good you know like I think that's yeah. that's definitely important and um yeah it was and and now I'm going to share you another story from the same night because someone came up to me very early on and I did tell you in the locker room when I first got there yeah. and he was like, he was looking at me. He's like, he's like, wait, he's like, last time I was here, I met you. He's like, I was with my partner who I'm no longer with, but he was like, I remember meeting you. And he's like, he's like, wait a minute. Aren't you, aren't you part of Toronto Unicorns like podcast he's like I just listened to a podcast on the way here and he's like your voice sounds so familiar and he recognized me and I was like it's curly and he was like oh no shit he's like I'm a big fan and I was gonna introduce you to him and I don't know if you guys ever cross paths um but he was visiting from Winnipeg and he is a music teacher high school music teacher in Winnipeg and we really hit it off because, you know, I'm super into music on the side uh -huh. and, you know, being a teacher myself, like we, we connected, you know? So anyway, I was like, um, you know, this guy is, is, uh, good times. And we just started talking and with him and I, it was immediately not a physical thing. It was just like an emotional connection. Uh, we actually ended up hanging out the next day and also, again, not a physical thing. We just hung out because oh, really? he was looking for people to hang out with. And I ended up taking him to an open mic night um, oh. at another bar. And then we came back to Oasis after and hung out And I, because he was like, you know, I really do want to go back. They're doing like a speed dating thing. And I'd really love to meet more people. And he was there from like Sunday to Thursday. Oh. Um so he was really fun too and was really looking for connections, but like he was fresh out of a relationship, like just broke out of like a marriage, 
He has two kids, you know, like not even a month out. Like he's really fresh. And he told me that our podcast was so like my first one that I did with you was so he said it spoke to him so much that it actually brought a tear to his eye because the things that I said about my marriage not working and the type of stuff that was going on and this like need for for sex and connection and whatever that I wasn't getting was exactly what he was going through and he's like I just really connected to the podcast so I think that was kind of cool you know like knowing that the stuff that we share and whatever that it really does connect to a lot of people and gets them thinking in a different way. And he literally said, if it wasn't for Toronto unicorns podcast, I don't think I'd be here. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful. And you specifically, I mean, I, I've been in this for a bit. I've seen the impact. I've met people whose lives have changed, but you on R and Amelia are now starting to get your own direct impacts and seeing it for yourself. And that is something special, I've got to say, because you you can probably sleep better at night like I do, knowing that we're helping people come home again to themselves. We're helping people know how to integrate into a new world and and again, resonate. Like even just you mentioning some details about your marriage. And I remember Peekaboo's episode where she mentioned having C-section scars. Those are really important things that people might connect with that I haven't yet introduced, right? On my channel, those specific sentences, whatever. So it's nice to know that what we're doing out there is changing people's lives. Now, some people like to hate on what I'm doing out there and I'm, you know, to each their own, but- You'll always get haters. We always get yeah. haters. It's like- goes with the territory and it's like for for every hater there's an appreciator and someone who you've really you know impacted and that's what's Mm -hmm. important so you know I I I don't know you've definitely pushed me to start looking into this and and I I really strongly feel that I've got to get my own podcast going and and um you know title like teacher by day vixen by night comes to mind you know like I just, I feel like there's a calling for me to do it because people are enjoying the stories and, and, you know, like you said before, I blew your mind when I told you how new I was, but I still am, you know, I'm like a year and a half into this and that's, and I've had so many experiences. Like you haven't, you have so many experiences that happen in a week that yeah. could shock people for their lives and that's why I think like I have a lot of space on my podcast with Curly Vixen in it but you need a lot more space you have a lot more to say and I think that uh, if you do start a podcast uh, no matter when I will put a link in this description of this podcast so that people can find it um but yeah you've got and only fans is coming I'm approved yeah. It's sure. And you know, the fact that somebody that connected with our podcast met you in real life, think about what that was just for a moment. Think about what that must have been like for that person. Does that not feel like alignment in life when you're like, I listened to this thing. I went, I've met that person and hung like, what are the fucking chances? So it's pretty cool when we, when we can have like a normal night at a club, but to them, we've changed their lives. Like you were Absolutely. pleasant, you were, you know, a nice woman, you weren't going to embarrass this man or make him feel rejected. And those are not guarantees, right? And so to have this gentleman and, and a few of them have such a, a nice, pleasant onboarding experience. I, I, I sleep well at night, Curly. How about you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially after some great pleasure, you know? Right. Basically, if you haven't seen the vlog, I have a truce of question game. I'm holding up if you're on YouTube, but basically it's a bunch of individual questions that somebody can kind of pick one out and ask and not be boring in a group. Uh, You helped people participate by making sure people knew the game was going on and things like that. That was really appreciated. How do you- And you had like the whole pool- You had like a whole, like the whole pool at one point, like we had like a massive circle. I was like backing up just to make space so that everybody could get in. And then some people that were at like the back of the pool wandered over and they're like, what's going on? So it was cool. I really like that. Like my favorite Oasis experiences have been doing something to unite the whole pool area. Like I, I literally directed the entire pool one night to join into a sing-along and we were all singing Bohemian Rhapsody. And oh there was God. like two or three people that came up to me later that night and was like, you just made 
me have the best night. Like doing that was like being in like a musical fantasy. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah, it was cool. Well, because some people, they come and they don't know how to be social. They don't know how to even right. talk to people, right? So to create- Especially on a safety. Tuesday, mm-hmm. a Tuesday night where it's Bukaki or DTF, there's a lot of single men that are there and have zero clue because I, I think a lot of them go that night because they do have a better chance of scoring because yeah. there are multiple women who literally are like, you don't even have to have a conversation with me. I just want to fuck. And they want to be fucked by many men. Yeah. Um, I have done that before, but for the most part, I try to connect to guys, you know, that's where I connect to people in the pool. So I think that game was brilliant. And I don't think it's something that maybe a, a regular person should just bring a line of questions. I don't think that would hit it off so well, but, yeah. but to have you influencing that, I, I think that was really great and gave a lot of guys and it gave an opportunity to everyone to figure out what each other's sexual things were because it was if it wasn't for you playing that I would have never known and you would have never known that this guy you know really wanted to give oral pleasure and had never done it before like we would have never discovered that right it's true and I remember one of the the women at the end when I asked like what's your pathway to orgasm which was one of the questions and she said counterclockwise clit pressure and I remember some guy like beside me his mind blew in front of me he's like I didn't know that there was a difference and I was like well with some everybody is different and I love that people were able to say out loud because that is the first way to start getting how you what you want in life is being able to communicate it and I don't know if that person hooked up but if they did I really hope they did it counterclockwise <laughs> no but he he that guy came upstairs when I was with Mr. Turkey mm-hmm. and he was literally watching us for a little bit off to the side and he was like let me know if you need me to jump in there clock clockwise or clockwise I was like that wasn't my thing but I was like that's really funny <laughs> yeah that's a really good uh good move to even just bring that back in because it's it was quite interesting and it was it was a good line like yeah would you like it clockwise or counterclockwise it wasn't would you like me to pleasure you it was like how would you like me to pleasure right. you you know <laughs> right it's so cool <laughs> I love the game it does a good job of making people feel like they can at least share enough that you get to see other people's personalities be displayed without any social or sexual pressure and that is the beginning of even just a nice conversation later after that game was over Right. How did it hold up in your little tags? It did really good. There's a little bit, because it went underwater a few times, but it has to be waterproof yeah. at Oasis. But to be honest, it really did hold up. I think I still want to laminate because there's a little bit of water, um, you know, marks in it. But to be honest, this could go again tonight. It would be, it would be ready Well, lucky for you, I'm a teacher and I can laminate for you. Right. <laughs> So I'm going to send you some very naughty questions on some paper and we're going to make that I will not share with my classroom. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, maybe one day I'll end up having one of these for sale right now. We're prototyping it, trying to figure out what's the best, uh, best way to do it. Most cost effective. And uh, yeah, so stay tuned for that. But it's, uh, I don't normally go to Bukaki and uh, it had been a while for me and I had not, I had not had that much fun at a sex club in a long time. And I didn't even have sex. I didn't, I didn't go there to have sex. In fact, when I went in the intrusive question game and went around in a circle talking about what we were open-minded to that night, I had announced that I wasn't looking for sex, right? So mm-hmm. I like that. I also like that I took off a, a bullseye off my back and was like, use that differently. Put it on someone else because I'm not going to be in that space. So it's good to when you're asking for what you want, sometimes you just want to be treated socially. Sometimes you just don't want to yep. be you know, you know, so yep, yep. yeah, yeah, that was so good. It was a really fun the world. Night. One, one Turkish or guy from Jordan or guy from Iran at a time. Winnipeg. Right? <laughs> so yeah, I love that we have that, that influence. It's great. Especially because we know the value of protecting that experience because if they had picked another woman who wasn't as sensitive to their situation, maybe they wouldn't have been as patient with them if something went wrong and they could have been scarred emotionally if they got rejected or embarrassed. And that's why I like to entrust my friends with these experiences because we're giving them something so special, but not, not, it's not one-sided because you will forever be thought of in that man's brain about when he took that magical trip to Toronto 
and have <laughs> met that internet sensation, you know, Curly Vixen, who basically got to lead him back to a place of he's, I don't know, I don't know what kind of journey he's on, but when you cross something like that off your list, your list doesn't usually end. It usually gets bigger. So, well, right. And I think there's a lot of men in these countries where it's not that women don't want pleasure. It's like, it's been ingrained in their heads that they don't deserve the pleasure. Mm -hmm. So sex in a lot of those countries, unless they break out of the norm is literally just straight penis in, get off for the man and there's zero attention to the woman. And I think it's not that he was a virgin because he was an older man. Like he was yeah. probably in his fifties, I would say, right? Say 47. And yeah. 47. Yeah. So like, I mean, most men at that stage have had quite a bit of experience, but I think his experiences had just been yeah. straight vanilla yeah. sex with no pleasure. And like, maybe he would have gotten off, but I think I think a lot of men, when they see porn, they're like, wait a minute, like, listen to the moans and groans of that woman. And he even said to me, he's like, what I was really loving was your reaction to everything. Like, he's like you with the sounds and everything. He was like, that was so amazing. And so I think, I think that, you know, watching that and, and him having, I'm hoping like me doing that for him uh, really gets him out of the, the mindset that he's used to of only um, of only providing pleasure or only getting pleasure for himself. But now his, his goal is going to be providing pleasure for the woman first. And then that in turn is giving him pleasure, you know? It's true. It's true. So and, uh, he had to, cool to have that liberated woman to show him what that looks like, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Little does he know how liberated we truly are over here. <laughs> That's right. He'd right, probably well, freak out really. if he knew. Right. I don't, <laughs> think, I don't think people can handle everything at once. We got to break them in easier. No. Right? <laughs> I, right. I call it That's emotional right. lube. But um, all right. Thank you for sharing this story. It is another another life change, basically from um, us basically being gentle with someone's soul. Because even though they're single guys and they're one of a million on, on in that club or any club they're all sensitive people who potentially have you know hopes and dreams of their own and so this is just another example to give people a little bit of a chance and maybe you'll be able to spark a connection that you might not have otherwise have ever imagined and I think a good idea to promote I know you just put up a YouTube video promoting your event at X Club at the end of the month. The meetup at X Club is meant to be an opportunity like that, a more of a one-off, but to collect your group of people who yeah. for lack of whoever shows up, it's going to be like sexual summer camp at the X Club that night. And we are going to make friends with who shows up. And those people are going to go home feeling like they were a part of something. So um, and I'm there yeah. too. So it's oh, yes. yeah. who wants to. you and I and someone else have some tentative plans that are happening after midnight, but we're not announcing those because you never know what life brings. So I'll, I'll say right. come to the X club, you stick around till after midnight, you might see some special things with Curly Dixon. Woo -woo. All right. Thanks everyone. Don't forget to check out. com. I've got all of my awesome fucking extra content explicit content i've even got a few swear videos on my OnlyFans page you can get all of the links on tinyunicorn.com <laughs>